the tranquil skies over southern England. Above a country preparing to crown its new king, one aircraft with a very special connection. This is the very aircraft the new king learned to fly in when he was just 20 years old. It's called a chipmunk and today it's taken to the skies above Bedfordshire. In 1968, while studying at Cambridge, the then Prince Charles received Royal Air Force training, cutting his teeth as a young pilot. A year later, he conducted his first solo flight before embarking on a short career in the Royal Navy and Royal Air Force. Today, Chipmunk WP903 is owned privately by a group of seven enthusiasts, and it lives here, in the private hangars of Shuttleworth. John Vivash is one of those owners, and he's agreed to take me for a ride, piloting the Chipmunk, just like King Charles would have 55 years ago. And wow, what an experience. We took off from Shuttleworth and headed east for Bazinbourne, a military base, before looping back on ourselves and landing 35 minutes later via a suddenly approach to the airfield. It was from Bazinbourne the King took off while taking tuition as a trainee pilot. Today, as John swings us around that very same airspace, it's impossible not to feel moved at the scenery below, but also the sense of history tied into this beautiful aircraft. Back on the ground, John told me why he loves flying the chipmunk. Uh, she's a beautiful aircraft to fly. Uh, she's a basic trainer. Uh, she's very forgiving, uh, but she does let you know when, when things are going wrong. Uh, and, uh, and, and she can be difficult to fly. She can be easy to fly. It's, uh, it's, it's a challenging and rewarding uh, flight in a chipmunk. Um, we're, we're very honored to be uh, essentially custodians of, uh, of such a beautiful aircraft uh, and that we maintain it uh, in its original colors, as you see behind me, uh, so that we can fly it. This particular aircraft features an exclusive Charles-themed modification, a sort of royal warning light, if you like. It's, uh, it's called the Parrot, due to its funny little beak shape uh, for the aerodynamics on the top. Um, and that was installed for King Charles uh, to basically let people know to, to stay away from that aircraft. But what does John know about the King's skill in the cockpit? Uh, not, not too much, actually. Um, we, we know he had a, a few, few bumpy flights. Um, there's some various bits in the logbooks. Um, and we still know his, uh, his instructor, his original instructor, um, who, who we do keep in touch with and has come flying uh, in the chipmunk uh, in recent years. That original instructor is Group Captain Philip Pinney, a man who can certainly vouch for the flying abilities of the King. A, a very simple answer to that is he was a very good pilot. From the start, he wanted to learn to fly. It gives the Royals immense pleasure because when you go solo, it doesn't matter whether you're a Royal or you or me, you're in the air, and if the engine stops, you're on your own. There's no bodyguard, there's no one else. You've got to solve the problem yourself. And I think all the royals have really enjoyed flying for that reason. Um, and he did very well indeed. And uh, really up to the end, I used to sort of assess him in a way against his father, and I felt very proud of the result. Due to civil aviation authority restrictions that prevent civilian single-engine aircraft from flying over London, this chipmunk, with arguably the closest of connections to the King, is unable to take part in the flypast to mark the King's coronation. Instead, however, a special display is planned in these skies. A celebrity aircraft with a logbook like no other, WP903, in her guard's red livery, retires to the hangars, her engine resting for future flights. And who knows, perhaps His Majesty might yet dust off those flying gloves one final time. James Wharton, Forces News, Shuttleworth. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.